Now, but this plane in front of us is, of course, the Airbus A380, a plane that ever since its birth 20 years ago has kind of been struggling to be a successful aircraft. I mean, only 254 of these were ever built. They're not being produced anymore, and a large proportion of these airplanes is just sitting on the ground somewhere or being scrapped already. All right, it's not that bad. But yes, you know, airlines have been struggling to find a way to make actual money with this plane. And the reasons are obvious. I mean, first of all, I think it is right to doubt whether the world actually needs a big plane like this. Do airlines actually find a lot of routes where they can fill up all of these 500,000 seats in the airplane? I guess not really. I mean, there's a reason why the much smaller 787 or even the 777 or the Airbus A330 is flown across the Atlantic Ocean for more often. But obviously, the biggest drawback of this airplane is that it needs four engines because it's so big. This A380 right here rocks the Rolls-Royce Trent 972 engine, which can also be found on planes like the Airbus A330, the Airbus A350, or even the 777 or the 787. But all these planes only need two of these engines. And well, it's right to assume then that these planes only use half of the fuel because they have only half of engines. Do you know what I mean? This airplane eats a lot of fuel in comparison to the higher profit that the capacity of this airplane brings. Everybody, yes, the typical malady of four engine airplanes, which are not needed anymore because over the years, engines have become so reliable that you don't need four of those anymore simply for backup. Something that used to be a rule for sure. Let me try to take off here. Which shouldn't be a problem. I mean, another classic example of this problem is, of course, the Airbus A340, which is a lot less successful than the A330, which can be seen as practically uh, the A340, but with two lesser engines. You know what I mean? And so, in today's video, I would like to find out, can we fix the A380? Is there a way to make this plane two engine only so that we can actually make this plane a little bit more economic and a bit less fuel hungry? Let's find out. And yes, everybody, we're starting off, of course, with the most powerful jet engine that is on the market by General Electric, which is maybe a bit weird to find on Airbus anyway. Either way, we are right now rocking the GE 90s, which is very powerful, can be seen on the 777. For example, the GE 9X, you know, the most modern version of the GEs, can deliver 110,000 pound feet of trust. That's quite a lot, but the problem is the Airbus A380 is so big that that power probably won't be enough. I mean, the original Trent 970s on the Zerg plane deliver 78,000 pound feet thrust each. So in total, 312,000 pound feet. And you know what that means? I mean, this these two engines here only deliver 200,000 pounds. So we are definitely lacking power now. Let's uh, maybe see if we can actually fly it all. So as you can see, we only now have two engines here on the screen. I haven't changed the screen. Yes, sir, buddy. I've once again employed my genius to fix Airbus's problem. As you can see, the engines, they spin wonderfully. No, I haven't gotten the animations to work, but it doesn't matter. We genuinely do have quite a realistic simulation of what it would be like to have GE9X engines under the wings. I mean, we already do have perks. For example, we are saving weight and we are saving a lot of aerodynamics because we don't have four engines hanging uh, below the wing. Um, come on, that we're at Los Angeles and we are able to rotate. Um, but this airplane is like severely underpowered now. Uh, kind of does work though. We're running on very, very empty weight though. So that's the reason why this airplane is able to go airborne. But we are airborne. Kind of works. We're kind of able to climb very slowly. What's funny is that yes, the GE9X engines are big, but it turns out they're not actually that much bigger than the uh, than the Trent engines though. Look, it looks totally normal. All right, all that as well, but let's maybe see what happens when we get some more weight in here like that. Some more flight time. Yeah, we want to do a long haul flight. Some good payload. Let's go ahead and totally bring this up to the maximum takeoff weight here with a lot of fuel on board and see how this airplane now performs. Uh, not not that well, but we've kind of ruined the whole purpose of this airplane that is having a high capacity now because it hasn't got a higher capacity now. They have a worse climb performance than a Cessna 172. Let's maybe try to come in for a landing here. Come on, let's get those flaps out. Let's get the landing gear out. We're now kind of drifting this airplane in the air. Shush. I mean, technically, it does fly just on using the GE90. Look at that. Think right. Shh. Think Shush. Right. We're very fast Think now. Right. This is an yeah. overspeeding Think airplane. Right. I would have never thought I would say that in this video. All right, hard landing. Time to put the reversers out, which um, has no animation either. Everybody has my visionary genius once again coming in. But the timing performance at least cannot be worse than on the actual A380 anyway, because that airplane also only had two reversers in the first place. So take a look, we're able to stop just fine. 
Maybe our landing gear is a little bit on fire because I went full brakes. Oh, well. But I really wouldn't want to do a takeoff on the maximum takeoff weight. Almost 574,000. That's amazing weight. I'm actually unsure if this is even going to even, you know, come airborne here on this runway at Los Angeles. All right, full power. Um, we are slowly speeding up. Okay, slowly moving at maximum weight. Mm, come on, come on, pull up. Rotate. We've reached the end of Los Angeles' runway. Oh, yes, that was a near tail strike, but we actually managed to somewhat take off. Somewhat, somewhat works. Not that bad, but this is definitely um, a very scary airplane to fly because it's it very much lacks performance. So this is definitely not realistic. It's true. For this thing to have two engines, we need to make bigger ones, more powerful ones. Yes, we need to make engines that are 150% more powerful than the ones that we had got on board. And in order to do that, let's really try to simply make them 150% bigger. Do you know what I mean? Does that make sense? Probably not. Everybody, yes. I introduce to you the finally powerful enough GE9XXX engine. It's quite a lot bigger, but it delivers the performance that we need. Yes, instead of just 110,000 pounds of allowable thrust per engine, we got 160,000 pounds. Definitely not. Yes, everybody, look at my ge genius. Um, okay, maybe we might have some issues with engine strikeage. Yes, the problem with the A380 is that it's kind of in a dead end. Yes, you could spend millions and millions of dollars in developing a new GE90 XXX engine that's much bigger, but you'd also have to completely redesign the entire airplane because you'd have to make the landing gear much taller, like they did on the 737 MAX. That one also had too big of engines compared to the early 737s, which is why it stands way up. You know, in order not to strike them, let's maybe see if we can even take off at all. Take a look at this immense acceleration. Now it does look a little bit ridiculous and a bit dangerous as well. And we are very quick to do just engine strikes. Um, that's stupid. There you go, struck the engine once again. All right, maybe the A380 is unfixable as it is. But there we go, we're finally able to do some proper flighting now. You really wouldn't want to stand near this huge engine though. I mean, if you land at an airport, this airplane will probably start sucking in things. But hey, look, I think we are kind of reducing weight by our modification now, so that brings performance. We also don't need as much fuel on board to fly further distances, so there must be more performance than how we started off, right? Look at that. This plane flies very normal. It's not overpowered now. It's just like the normal A380. There we go. I have literally fixed it, okay? I think landing this plane must be very scary. Like genuine engine strikes 24-7. Thank you very much. All right, high speed landing now. Try that. No idea what this alert is. Shut up. Beautiful. There we go. Nice and hard touchdown. Let's go full on the reversers. Very good. Very nice. Full power stopping in the Airbus A380. Look at that. Okay, maybe we landed too fast. Maybe this whole video is absolutely plain stupid. So anything overall, we can conclude that the A380 is completely hopeless. Making the landing gear bigger to have more ground clearance is probably impossible with such delicate landing gear right here. I mean, this is definitely not just a 737. That's a lot of landing gears. And take a look how we're sucking in literal grass. This is a grass mower at this point, and the performance isn't even that amazing. Oh, Jesus, we've died. So unless we can make engines that somehow magically become strong, Longer, even though you don't make them bigger and without fitting afterburners to them. This is an impossible project. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I'll see you guys in the next one as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, <laughs> Guns Killer, R27, James Duram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.